Thanks to Alec for this request, and since you guys enjoyed last video so much, here is the exact opposite. In this video, we'll be discussing 5 racing game habits that make you a pro. In most arcade games, you're rewarded for risky driving, like driving in the oncoming lane or getting near misses with traffic. Pro gamers love to take advantage of these bonuses and utilize them to get ahead of the competition. I don't know about you guys, but when I was a noob, I liked to keep a planet's worth of distance away from traffic. Even knowing the incentives of driving risky, I still wouldn't, just because if I even remotely got close to a traffic car, my vehicle would seemingly magnetize towards it and I'd wreck. However, after not playing racing games for almost a whole decade, when I got back to them, I somehow got way better than I remembered. Isn't that kind of weird? You'd think the exact opposite would happen, like I'd get worse or something, but no, I got better. Tell you what, comment down below if you've quit racing games for a long time and what happened when you started to play them again. Did you magically get better also? So for most noobs who play racing sims, they have no idea what the heck tuning even is, and normally just drive every car on its stock setup because they don't want to risk doing something stupid. Although it's funny to see the occasional noob who stretches the gears for as long as possible because they think that will give their car the best possible top speed while completely neglecting the fact that their car doesn't even have enough power to achieve said speed. When it comes to upgrading, most noobs just max out all the car's components, which isn't always the most optimal setup for every circumstance. For example, in most racing games, how much you upgrade your car will determine its overall rank, and what competition you will be paired up against. In Forza Horizon 3, there are a lot of cars able to achieve a rank of X, or 999. However, unlike the other ranks which promote a more fair and balanced competition, X rank has no limit to it. Meaning that a maxed out car that barely achieves X rank isn't going to compare to a car that makes it deeper within X rank, but it will still be paired against it anyway. Ranks aside, tuning and upgrading cars for the type of race is also key. There's no point in using racing slicks and driving on stiff springs during a rally race, so it's important to make sure you're actually using the proper equipment, unless you're some masochist who likes to challenge themselves. Speaking of which, that brings us to the next entry on this list, making really weird builds. If you've gotten so good at the game that playing it traditionally becomes boring, chances are you're probably rallying with a supercar. It's not practical at all, but somehow you're still winning races because that's just how good you've become. You don't care what the game tells you, and besides, it's 2017, your supercar can identify as a rally car if it wants. Please don't get offended, that was just a joke, calm down. Anyways, the main reason I love this phase so much is because it allows us to have fun with the game again. There's just something so hilarious about starting a drift lobby and having everyone show up in a Ford Transit. This is what a game is meant to be. It should be about giving people the freedom to do something that would otherwise and be entirely against traditional meaning in real life, because who cares, it's not real life, and that's what makes playing games so fun. Knowing the course like the back of your hand. You've played the game so much that you know every track, every possible route and shortcut, you don't even look at the map anymore while racing, because every turn has already been etched into your own personal map within your mind. In open world racing games, this can be a little more difficult, but in due time, you'll find yourself making your way from one side of the map to another in no time. It's a satisfying experience, from booting up the game as a noob and not even being able to find where the airport is, to suddenly being able to make it into any vantage point with nothing else but the location name. This skill carries on to other racing games as well, as you didn't just improve your ability to memorize, but also your ability to pathfind. Even entirely vast landscapes quickly feel like home to you. The problem is that there's also a curse to this skill, which is that some charm is lost. The feeling of being in a wondrous open world filled with cars of your dreams suddenly starts to feel so familiar that it becomes hard for the anything to feel like new anymore. Playing on max difficulty. Let's face it, even at max settings, the AI still can't keep up with you. But what other choice do you have when you're grinding for credits? Speaking of which, most games like Forza and Ride will give more credits based on your difficulty settings. Things like turning racing lines off and not using assists adds to the difficulty and gives more credits. As mentioned in the previous entry, the tracks have been etched into our mind, but also our ability to understand how our vehicle works allows us to know exactly when to brake and what angle to approach the apex. Kudos to those who play with manual with clutch and actually have a whole steering wheel setup. Anyways, before we end this video, here are a few bonus mentions. The first one is playing racing games with a keyboard. We all know the keyboard is the racing game's worst enemy, since it gives us no throttle control, and really just no control in general. But for the same reason there are masochists who like using really weird builds, there are gamers out there who are so bored of using the controller or steering wheel 
that they actually purposely challenged themselves to use the keyboard, and somehow still managed to win first. The second bonus mention is using a Mustang and not crashing. Is this meme dead yet? I hope it is. Also, before any Mustang owners get triggered, calm down, I'm a Mustang owner myself. Also, if you for some reason aren't sick of the Mustang meme yet, boy do I have the video for you. Check out this video on my second channel, Kartaku, and I almost guarantee that that video will make you sick of the Mustang meme. Hell, it'll make you sick of the word Mustang in general. Also, fair warning, there's a weeb trash waifu in that video too, so yeah, um, thanks for watching, Blade Angel out.